so everybody's heard of the beadlock wheel. Um, I want to take a second to describe some of the uh, characteristics of the wheel and how to measure it and tell what it is and then also go into um, uh, how to check before you mount uh, a set of beadlock wheels and tires specific dimensions on bead bundle and things like that so I want to touch base on a little bit of that because it this gets missed a lot and everybody thinks you just throw the rim together bolt the uh, bead ring on and you're good to go but there are sp specifics that need to be addressed that will um, eliminate a lot of problems for you down the road so first thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about the wheel so this is a standard uh, weld beadlock wheel this one is uh, 16 inches wide, 16 inches diameter. Um, it has a uh, specific bolt circle and then a backspace. So, so wheels have um, a type, which is a beadlock, and then they also have dimensions, which is width. Um, the width of this wheel is going to be measured across here inside, right inside the beadlock ring, 16 inches. The, uh, the diameter, which uh, I'll take the ring off and measure that in a minute, the um, backspace, which is something that's commonly missed. So the backspace is the distance um, from the beadlock ring to the wheel flange. Okay, so you can easily check that with a straight edge and a tape measure. And you just put the straight edge tape uh, straight across the, the top of the beadlock ring with it bolted down. I've just got a couple bolts in this. And then just measure straight down to the wheel mounting surface. This one's four inches. So this is a four inch backspace wheel. Um, bolt circle. This is this is screwed up all the time. I mean, it, bolt circle is kind of something that very few people know how to measure, and, and when they check a wheel, they don't they don't come up with the right number. So, the bolt circle is simply the diameter of the circle through the center of all five of the mounting studs. So you've got mounting holes in here, and there's a center line of the diameter through here, and that diameter is what the bolt circle is. It's not the dimension. We get this all the time. It's ever, they'll tell us it's the dimension between this hole, skip a hole, and measure over to this one. That's not it. It's, it is the diameter of the center line of those five mounting holes. This particular wheel, if, if I measure this here, and I, simply by looking at it, I can tell what it is, but if I measure from this hole and go in between these holes, I can see that the arc through there would be at five and a half. Now I know this wheel is, is five and a half bolt circle, but the common bolt circles are uh, five and a half, five, four and three quarter, and four and a half. Um, a standard for us is uh, five and a half. We have cars with five inch also, so, uh, um, but that's a very common problem that we see when somebody tells us what bolt circle they have. They, they don't, um, they don't know how to measure it. So this wheel would be called five on five and a half. So it's five uh, studs at, at a five and a half inch diameter circle. So that's real simple to do. So we've got our backspace determined. We've got our width determined. Uh, I'm gonna zip this ring off here. So it'll be easier to mount this on when we get to that point. So we'll real simply check the um, diameter now. So now that I have the ring up, I can measure the diameter, which is going to be right across the inside step of this. You can see where the bead sets, and this is 16 inches um, on the inside step here. So this is a 16 inch diameter, 16 inch width, five on five and a half, four inch back spacing. So that describes this wheel in its entirety. So I'm going to flip it over, take this ring off the other side. Okay, so we're ready to uh, we're ready to mount this wheel and tire combination. So I've got a couple tires here, and one of the things that's missed all the time in mounting a um, uh, a bead lock tire and wheel combination is the relationship between the spacing of the wheel, the, the bead spacing and the bead bundle on the tire. So this is something that has to be checked every time. These tires are manufactured by Mickey Thompson, Goodyear, Hoosier, whoever, whatever combination 
that you choose to run, but they, they're all built and they're, they're built by machines that are run by humans. So there can be inconsistencies in the tires. Um, there can also be inconsistencies in the wheels. I mean, it's, it, can, it can slip through the manufacturing process where something is machined wrong um, and the dimension for the width to clamp onto this bead bundle can be wrong. So you have to check this. I mean, it is imperative to, to check this before you mount the tire and wheel combination so that you know that you have the right amount of crush on the bead by this ring. And it's, it's something that's just not known in the industry on how to check this. And, and, and if, even if they know that it should be checked, nobody knows what the number is. So um, I'm gonna explain what that is so that you can kind of uh, get an idea how important it is to check it. So um, when I put this ring on here, there's, a, there's an obvious space in, in between the ring and the wheel where the bead is gonna be crushed and clamped by this ring. Now, the, uh, this wheel has uh, uh, serrations machined into it. It's kind of knurled a little bit so that it bites onto the bead of the uh, tire to keep it from spinning because we don't want the tire to spin on the wheel because obviously we're gonna apply a lot of horsepower through this wheel to this tire. The tire's gonna be stuck to the track. What's gonna happen? This wheel is gonna try to spin inside this tire. So we want that clamp tight so that it does not spin. So we have some more terminology here, which I'm gonna to explain that the, the bead bundle is this thick part of the tire right here. Both of these tires have a bead bundle and that thickness needs to be checked on both sides of the tire. So when you're mounting a pair of these, you wanna check both sides because um, let's say there was a manufacturing process error where this bead bundle did not uh, get manufactured to the right thickness or it's thinner than the other side. That means that one side's gonna clamp tight, the other side is not. So to measure this, we need a pair of uh, calipers and we wanna, wanna measure this thickness at the point right here to the back side of this bead where it's gonna clamp into the bead lock wheel. So I'm getting about 800, 795 to 800. So this is about 800 thick. Um, now, if I, I don't need to bolt this down because it's uh, set pretty flat on here. So I've got 800 thickness here. Let's go check this Mickey Thompson tire here. And I have about the same. I have about 780 or so if I check in a couple different places. So let's say I have 780, I have 800 here. And now I need to check the wheel to see what kind of crush I'm gonna get. So if I check this spacing in the wheel here, got about 680. I've got about, yeah, I've got right at 680. So I've got 680 here, I've got 800 here, I've got approximately 780 here. So my crush is gonna be 120 and 100. And that is right on the specifications that we use. Now, tire manufacturers, everybody has a difference in opinion on what this is. Our personal preference is 100 to 120. And that's based off of years of mounting these tires and seeing what crush will spin and what will not spin. So if you start to get under 100, obviously you have less crush on this ring and the chance for the tire to spin is much greater. So we found that 100 to 120 thousandths of crush is uh, very good to hold the, the tire from spinning on the wheel. So now we want to do this on both sides and every time you mount a new set of tires you want to check the wheel and the bead thickness on both tires you're mounting on both sides the front and the back and know your wheels. So if you've got a set that you know the number then mark it on there and that way every time you mount a set of tires you know what that is but it is very important to make sure that you've got a good crush on that bead and that we know that it's tight enough to not let the wheel spin inside the tire okay so now we've measured this we know what our bead bundle is we've got a good number on that we know what our wheel is so um, we're going to um, to mount this up and I'm just going to throw this back in this Goodyear tire so this, um, this wheel is very easy to mount uh, once, uh, once you have the rings off of it. So we can just throw the tire down and, and uh, we're gonna get a little, bit of, uh, a little bit of lubricant here. We got some uh, water and soap here to put on this ring. 
And we're <clears throat> we're just gonna stick this uh, wheel in here. Okay. So now I've just pushed that down in there. So now it's setting on top of the bead on the other side. So now I need to get um, the bead back on top of this side. So I'm going to uh, just use these tire spoons and just pop this around and get this on top of here. And since there's no ring on it, it's it's very easy to pop this up on here. Okay, so now I've got that in there. So that, that's pretty easy to do. Okay, so now I've got this tight in there. And uh, I need to make sure that the uh, the bead is set down inside the step on the wheel before I put the ring on. So I'm just gonna pop this in here. Okay. Now. Okay, now I've got that, that uh, bead set down in that step, and I'm going to put the ring on here, line it up with the bolt holes. And so if I just look at this, it's obviously setting up on here pretty high. So I'm gonna throw a couple bolts in it real quick just to get it started. I'm not gonna sit here and run all these bolts down and bore you guys with all this bullshit, but I'll get this started real quick. So I've got that just started roughly on there and that bead has just got a little bit of light tension on, uh, on the ring's got a little tension on that bead. So if I check this now, I'm going to have, say I've got about 150, I've got about 150 here. So I've just got it started. So I know that I've got, um, just measuring it to the outside of the ring, uh, I'm going to have about 140, 150 just sitting here. So I've got nice uh, bead crush on this so once I put this together I want to put uh, I want to put all the bolts in it and uh, one thing that's imperative to this job is anti-seize we want to put uh, anti-seize on the threads and under the washer here and we want to start and just put all the bolts in it and we're going to go around and 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 basically we're going to tighten this in a series we're just going to tighten it down tighten it down give each one like a half a turn and uh, you can use a battery impact or whatever's easiest and get the uh, get the ring down tight to the to the wheel at that point um, you can flip it over and do the backside same thing set the ring in there put some anti-seize on all the bolts run them down and get the uh, get the gap to zero now you're ready to torque this ring down so you want to torque all these bolts you don't just want to run them down with an impact you want to take a torque wrench and we use um, uh, 20 foot pounds is our number to torque these bolts to so whether it's got bolts or studs or some of the new delta wheels have studs in them and they have nuts and they have a little conical washer on them um, you need to make sure that 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 all is anti seized up good so that you get a nice accurate torque on it so you go around here and uh, tighten them all down torque them all to 20 flip it over do the same thing to the other side click them all off at 20 foot pounds <clears throat> now you're ready to put some uh, air in the tire and wheel package so uh, obviously we got a good seal and uh, we're ready to blow this up so what we're gonna do is because uh, we want to check uh, roll out on this tire so that we know that both tires are the same size when we're done so we're gonna blow this tire up to um, 12 pounds we're gonna put 12 pounds of air in it and we're gonna do that to seat the, the bead and kind of let it move around and center itself in that ring and then we're going to let the air out of it and then we're going to air it back up to six so we're going to go 12 let the air out air it back up to six push this tire aside we're going to mount the other tire and wheel up and then we're going to do the same thing to it once we're done uh, we're going to check roll out and we're going to check roll out by measuring the center of the, the diameter of the center of the tire we're going to we're going to roll that tape around and get the circumference of that we're going to get the the circumference around the center of the tire at six psi 
So it's real easy. We've got these little small tapes that we have for measuring rollout, and they're real thin, and, and you, you can just tape one down to the um, tire here, roll it, spin it around, come around and get a number. And uh, we want um, these at the absolute maximum. Um, I, I don't like to see a half inch. I mean, we, we want to be, I, I would like, I'm very comfortable with a quarter inch difference from side to side. But uh, if it has, if it's three eighths or so, um, I'm okay with that. But uh, if it's a half inch, we'll uh, take a little air and blow that tire, the smaller tire up and stretch it out a little bit, just so we can get them both the same size. Now, one thing that a lot of guys miss is, uh, you know, for the car to go straight, the two rear tires have to be the same size. So you can't tune on the chassis if you've got a tire on one side that's an inch bigger than it is on the other side. And we see this all the time because once you run this car and you spin the tire through the burnout and you put that first run on it, a couple things are going to happen. That tire is going to grow. It's, going to, it's never going to be the size that it is now when you check the rollout when it's cold and static like this. So once you spin it up and get it hot, that tire is going to grow about an inch in, in, uh, in its overall circumference. And so um, it's important after the first run to check the rollout on the tire. And it's important to do that for several runs after that until they stabilize. And you should at the very minimum do that before each race. Check your tire rollout and make sure that both rear tires are the same size because it is almost every time we have a, 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 an issue, the first thing we check is the rollout on the, on the tires. And uh, it is, is not uncommon to find an, an inch difference or more in a tire that has been mounted an in, in inch, inch bigger, inch smaller than one on the other side. So if you're trying to straighten the car out, it's going right or left and you've got a, an inch bigger tire on one side, you have to fix that issue. That has to be resolved immediately so that you can make corrections to the rest of the car. So um, once you get the, um, the rollout the same, you're happy you got the tires mounted, you got six pounds in them, they're, um, they're, they're good uh, match set, then uh, you need to balance them up. You can, you can simply use a bubble balancer. Um, we have a very nice digital spin balancer that we use for the rear tires. Uh, a, a really economical bubble balancer works just fine. Get the weight on them as close as you can um, so that you have the tires balanced uh, accurately. And then uh, we put all the weights on the inside of the rim. We'll put them on the back side. And then we'll cover that uh, with uh, some uh, tape. We have some really nice aluminized uh, tape that we put over the weights to secure those uh, on the wheel because obviously they're going to be spinning at a at a high uh, rate of speed, so we want to keep those on there. So you've got them mounted, you've got the rollout checked, you've got them balanced, uh, you're ready to put them on the car.